My number three best chess game of the 1940s is Savelli Tartakova vs. Max Ua. This game was played in Vienna 1948. The tournament was a huge success for Miguel Nidorf, but this game was the most memorable of the event and one of the most memorable of the decade. The two players in the game have some similarities. Tartakovar and Ua were both great chess authors. Tartakovar was known for his great wit and some of the most famous sayings in chess history come from him. On the other hand, Ua is known for his great instructional writing and is writing about great tournaments and great matches, and I highly recommend you read both if you get the chance. Also, both players were arguably a little bit past their prime. Tartakova already had some of his great successes in the early 1900s, the 1910s, 1920s, and some in the early 1930s. And Owa, on the other hand, while still one of the best chess players in the world, had already been an ex-world chess champion for 11 years. This game teaches a valuable chess lesson. That lesson is that even if your chess opening is a bit of a disaster, you can still come back and win a brilliant game. In this particular game, we see an innovation already on move four in the Italian game. Here, after the move pawn c3, what is very normal is to play knight f6. If white pushes forward in the middle of the board, black can trade and play bishop to b4 check. There's a lot of theory here, but black is doing well. Instead, Owa in this position pulls back with bishop to b6. This move is losing time, and I don't really know my chess uh, theory from the 1940s, but I have to imagine that even at the time, this move must have been a little bit uncommon and viewed skeptically. White is able to push forward in the middle of the board. The idea seems to be to try to hold onto the e5 point and base your game around that, but that's not enough of a basis for a good game. Queen e7, castles d6, trying to support this point and develop the bishop to g4, but of course, white shuts down that development of the bishop with pawn to h3. Knight f6, rook e1, black castles, and a nice move now, knight to a3. Knight is thinking about going to c4, where white might just pick up the bishop pair, and there are also other ideas that we will see in just a moment. Knight back to d8. I don't understand this move at all, and I'm not really going to try. Bishop f1, and knight back to e8. It's not a good sign when you're putting both of your minor pieces, both of your knights, back on the first rank, and it's not a King's Indian defense. Instead, it's a semi-closed position where there are definitely open lines. I do at least understand this move, though. The idea is after knight c4 to play pawn to f6, securing the e5 point. Unfortunately, this idea is not a very good one. White is winning material by force. Pawn to a4, threatening to trap the bishop here with pawn to a5, need to make some escape squares for the bishop, but after pawn c6 or a6, knight takes, recaptures, queen to b3, check. And this move is forking the king and the pawn. White wins a pawn, and not only does white have a pawn, but also the compensation. White has the bishop pair, the strong center, and this pawn over here on the queen side. However, from this point forward, the game is going to change trajectories. White is going to play a bit purposelessly, and black is going to push forward with clear purpose until things crack with a mistake from white that is going to allow an incredible combination. So, pawn to g5, pushing forward on the one side of the board where black may be able to equal white, the king side. Bishop c4, pawn to h6, and pawn to h4. I don't really understand this move pushing forward on the side of the board where you don't really have an advantage when you have an advantage everywhere else. And after king h7, I really don't understand pawn takes g5. White may still be better at this point, but this is definitely a mistake to open the h-file, and white will regret it. Pawn takes g5, pawn takes on e5 as well, and now bishop e3. Rook h8. Black is going for the h-file. There's the clear idea of king g6 and maybe queen to h7. Pawn g3, getting ready to just play up king g2, and then rook to h1. But unfortunately, after king g6, the very natural move that white clearly intended with pawn g3 is a big mistake. King g2, and now this is a great moment to pause your video and try to find black's next move. Well, Uwa at this point plays knight f4 check. After knight f4 check, black is winning. Pawn takes f4, now bishop h3 check. 
The king is obviously stuck on the G file. It can go forward or backwards, but in either case, it's going to be in a bit of a mating net. It moves up the board, on takes f4 check, and bishop takes f4. Now, natural is to capture back, and you get your material back, but after king takes, the king is actually going to hide comfortably on e3, and white is close to winning again. However, there is an intermediate move. It is queen d7, one of the best moves in the game. Now, the idea of queen g4 check and checkmate in just a moment is so strong that white has to play knight h2, a terrible move to have to include. At this point, we can capture on f4, and after king takes f4, rook h4 check, and king e3, white's king is not safe on e3 because we are able to play bishop g2, and we threaten the knight, and we threaten the pawn on e4. There is only one move that defends both of these uh, threats. That is the move knight to f3, but this is another great moment to pause your video and try to find black's next. Well, at this point, we see that tactically, Uwe is totally on point, and he plays the move rook takes e4 check, a beautiful rook sacrifice. After king takes e4, the king is dragged further up the board, and now knight d6 check. The loose bishop on c4 is going to be lost, and the white king is going to remain under attack. King d3, queen f5 check, the king steps up to d4. Of course, if you pull back, you lose the bishop, and you lose the queen because of this royal fork. So we see king d4, and at this point, the strongest move is queen takes f3. You're picking off the knight, and you're continuing to attack the white king in the middle of the board. You're also continuing to threaten things like queen to f4 check, queen takes f2 check, and moves that pick off the bishop in just a moment. It's just an overwhelming attack. There's no way to pull it together with the white pieces. Instead, at this point, we do see some inaccurate play. Queen f4 check. And after king d3, if you go back with queen to f5 check, you can get the same position and take on f3 with the king on e4. But obviously, the point of queen f4 check was queen takes c4 check. This allows the white king to pull back king c2, and now after bishop takes f3, things are not so clear. The white king is the one that is in the most danger, but at this point, we see that mate is not likely to happen very soon, and material is actually equal. Yes, we would rather have the minor pieces, the bishop and the knight, instead of the rook and the pawn that white has, but it's not an easy game to win. b3 creates a little room for the king to hide on b2. Bishop e4 check, king b2, queen e3, with obvious ideas of queen to d2 check, which could close to win the game, and of course you're also threatening the immediate queen c2 check. So at this point, the only good defensive try is rook ec1. Now, this is really passive. You don't want to leave this rook here on a1, but it turns out that you do need the rook to defend the a file. In this position, everything is defended for white, and white, though very passive, is not in a position where it's obvious how white will lose immediately. This is absolutely the best defense, and the onus here is on black to figure a way to continue to press this position. There's a good chance that white will get some chances to come back later in the game. However, after queen d3, we see a natural rook g1 check king f7, and now if you go rook over to c1, the king is actually on a better square here on f7, and so you can continue with a more attacking move, knight b5. At this point, if you capture, you've opened up the a file, so queen d2 check leads to mate, and with the knight on b5, you're covering a3, so you're threatening queen d2 check in this position. If queen takes b7 check, king e6, there's no way to hold on. Instead, the queen must pull back right away for black with queen e3. Now, the queens are going to get traded. The knight should then come back to d6. And at this point, it's definitely going to take work to win. But the chess engine does think that the two minor pieces should win in the long run. Black is certainly much, much better. However, after king f7, we see rook a c1. The natural move, right? We want this rook over here defending. We want this rook active. We don't want our rooks here and here, but that would have been the correct defensive setup because now black wins by force. Queen d2 check, king a3, and this is another great moment to pause your video and find the decisive continuation. Well, knight c4 check. This move wrecks the king's defenses, and it's obviously a royal fork, so the knight must be captured if white isn't just going to lose on material. Pawn takes c4, 
and now rook takes a4 check this is why the rook was needed over on a1 king takes a4 and now queen a2 check king over to b4 and queen b2 check with a skewer at this point we actually see that tartakova resigned why did he resign he can move his king to two different squares that do defend the queen in response to the skewer well if king a5 then there's queen to a3 check and mate and if we see king to c5 we see another skewer but this time there's nowhere for the king to move that does defend the queen so black is just going to capture the full queen on the next turn a beautiful piece of geometry i hope that you've enjoyed this really scintillating finish and the whole game it's a great example of fighting chess from two of the great masters in the game's history if you want to see more of my favorite chess games from the 1940s, then simply click on the playlist that is popping up on your screen as I speak.